All right, well, it's 1247. How about we get started? Um, so, and we certainly can use the, the chat feature as well if um, we have any audio problems. But of course, I always like this just to be a, a candid conversation. Hi, Marty. Please add with your um, video and audio. Um, so, I put together, uh, well, I'm Robert Bernard. I'm an IT professor and program coordinator at Mott Community College in Flint, Michigan. And um, been trying to host this round table for uh, quite a number of years. And I threw together some topics just to, to get things started. But um, please tell me um, what you would like to have added to the agenda. And then as things just spark throughout our conversation, of course, we can, we can add them. No big deal. So are there any topics that anybody uh, has on their mind? Here oh, a mine. normal IT group full of words. <laughs> Here we have mine covered, so perfect. <laughs> All right. So we'll kind of go through the list and whatever we have. So how is everybody doing with um, just overall IT enrollment? We are shy, aren't we? Um, it, our campus enrollment's up 11%, and uh, thankfully, well, I don't know, we don't track really anything besides our overall enrollment, but I typically offer one intro to cybersecurity course a year. Um, I had to offer two because they both, the first one got a waiting list and the second one had a waiting list. So in theory, my program doubled. I mean, not that my program's very big. Um... So I may have 40 students going through in this cohort. Um, so I, I think that's good. Our computer science, it's not my area, but uh, I think we ran three sections of our intro, our computer science one, which we typically only run one. So we're using a lot of that, it wasn't Michigan Reconnect money and get a lot of uh, non-traditional students in. So we'll see if they stick around after a semester. Mm-hmm. I think that'll be very interesting to see the, the persistence. Um, how about you, Scott? Where, where are you from? I'm from Northwestern Michigan College up in Traverse City. So, oh, okay. And as far, yeah. And so as far as our enrollment, which has been really kind of interesting, a few years ago, we were doing really well. Over the last couple of years with the COVID and everything else, our enrollment has dipped uh we're mainly getting kids from the local career tech center that's coming through and a few from high school not as many non-traditional we have had a few come in with the michigan reconnect um but our numbers are down a little bit and i'm still i've been doing a lot of outreach lately and that's kind of on my plan for more this fall and spring but we're trying to figure out uh why on these uh our developer side um, they seem to be doing pretty strong, but on the infrastructure side, um, we're having a little difficulty getting them in the door. And when we do, they'll get into the classes and then pretty soon they go, you know, I don't think I really want to go into this major. And I've seen a little bit more of that than I normally do. Uh, I think they come in thinking that, oh, I'd like to work on a computer and, you know, I know it, that's kind of fun. And then they get into the IT side of it and they go, this isn't anything near what I thought it was going to be. So uh, we're hoping we're going to change some things around. I hear schools, some schools are just knocking out the enrollment numbers, but for me lately, it's been down a little bit. Okay. Um, how about Marty? Oh, and we have Kristen on board now too. That's good. Um, it, please do share right through um, the, the video and, and audio, or if uh, you're unable, it, you, know, you can at least chat through it. So, Kristen, how are you doing with enrollment in your area? Hi. Um, well, I'm a little um, unique here. I'm from um, the Economic and Workforce Development Department, but I this um, roundtable was of interest because we're starting to um, think about rolling out short-term program, a short-term training program mm -hmm. with an IT focus. So we're trying to figure out what that is. We've tried to do others in the past, partnering with Apprenti and such. Um, 
but we weren't getting the students enrolled either in those training programs. So just trying to really see what other areas are doing and what's working. Um, and hopefully, you know, we're more of the R&D of the college. So, you know, we'll start a training program and then hopefully roll it over into the credit side as well. Um, so I know overall our enrollment is up. I'm not sure exactly what areas it is. Okay. And then at my, the last that I heard was we were, um, we were down 2%, but we, we still weren't completely through um, registration yet. So I, I, I would assume it's probably pretty flat. Um, as far as IT goes, it's the same thing that Will explained. They, they don't do that detailed of enrollment numbers, but I can show through our um, course enrollments that we added an additional cybersecurity course. Um, we had three intro to programming courses, those all filled. And then um, the CIS side of the house, so database, um, our second level programming, so um, .NET and C++, those had waiting lists of about eight, which put us just in a rough spot because we've got a 25 seat count, so it was not enough to um, justify pushing forward, um, which is, is a real challenge because, of course, we know those students sitting out there wanting it. Um, so IT seems to be doing well. Uh, as far as campus versus hybrid versus online, um, our faculty were slated to do mostly online and hybrid for this term as well as winter. Um, what we found was totally online. Those were the sections that gobbled up first from students, and then they went into hybrid as their second. Uh, and then campus, that, that just wasn't so, such a hot player, at least for the fall. We opened up for winter in about a week or so. What about everybody else? What did you find for what your students are looking for as far as the offerings go? Well, at Monroe, uh, it's pretty much the same pattern. We, the students prefer the online stuff because they don't have to come to campus, don't have to worry about driving schedules and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not sure they're performing as well. Um, winter, there's talk that we may push back to the on full online format because we're in a high spread contagion community or something like that. Um, I'm pushing for something called student choice, where um, I find that if I list a class online, students are afraid to come in and ask for help. If I list it as blended, they won't take it because they don't want to come to campus. So the student choice is um, all the content will be available online and I will have, instead of office hours, I'm gonna have lab hours where if they're in any of my classes or somebody else's classes, they can come in and see me in the classroom. And the students seem to be liking that idea. We haven't officially classified any of our classes that way yet. It has to go through you know 17 different signatures first. So I'm, I'm hoping that will work. Uh, one of the other sessions I was in this morning, they were talking about different modes. Um, I'm not sure that's the correct term of delivery. They were looking more of the uh, the inclusion aspect, but um, you know, hope, hopefully something different will work. Good. What about, um, let's see, we have Marty here and then Scott popped off. The guy. It seems like he's got, well, I see him coming back again. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my audio. I'm sorry. And my video. It keeps knocking me off. Um, so how about are, what modality are your students looking for? What, what are you finding? I think he blanked. Right. Okay. Can you guys hear me, Marty? Hi, Marty. Yes, hey. we can hear you. Yeah, no video on this. I don't have a camera set up to this. I'm at work. Uh, anyway, um, the enrollment, to answer the previous question, we're up from last year, but we were, took a huge hit last year. I think everyone did. but um, So we're up from last year. We're still down from two years ago, and it's, I think, about 2 or 3%. Uh, CIS classes, it seems like we're doing really well, in, uh, and I don't know who else said it. Uh, it might have been Scott, but um, 
our computer science related classes like programming languages and software seem to be doing really well and we're filling those but we're having trouble with our cisco and networking classes filling those we've had to turn a few of those into independent studies um students and moving on to this question uh, students tend to like the online stuff and, and probably for the the recent reasons william mentioned is that um we don't they don't want to come to campus i, I don't want to come to campus <laughs> so I'm, i don't i'm not surprised that they don't want to come to campus either so um and it's just i think there's a lot of convenience with online because we i tend to be very flexible with due dates and things like that but not all instructors are and uh, but there's a lot of flexibility with a strictly online class uh, for students to do it a little bit more self-paced so that's 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 it for me i'm back i'm going to leave my video off and maybe that'll make a difference but uh we're doing pretty much a live stream with zoom for most of our courses uh on the infrastructure side uh the networking the cybersecurity, and all of that and uh, it's working the students are attending um you know occasionally we'll have uh you know a few that uh, won't show up but for the most part um we don't have anything directly online and what i usually do for my students anyway is because many of them are working I kind of give them the option. So even though the class is even in a situation where it would be face to face, I record all of my lecture material, um, including the lab days. So um, I even let them attend almost, even though it's a face to face class um, in a kind of an online type of role where they can listen to the recordings, do the work, submit it, uh, come see me if during office hours, that kind of thing. Okay. And and what I found, uh, you know, the online was, of course, probably popular. But one thing we did do was um, virtual hybrid, which kind of, I, I wanted the whole Zoom thing at the beginning of the pandemic because I, I think they were going through fatiguing them enough. Um, but for fall, I offered uh, scheduled synchronous meetings. Uh, but I have everything. The course that we had online. So with it being online, um, I told them that they were encouraged to strongly virtually attend the synchronous session. And I'm getting about 20 out of 20, I think there's 24 students in there. So I'm getting 20 that are coming up each week. So I think that is an incredible win. So I'm trying to win this winter, though I don't think the college has a real method for offering that. We're in the same boat as well when it comes down to it. Uh, so, okay, Robert, so, you're breaking up. I am. Let's see here. Yep. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, I thought it was me at first. <laughs> um, about the most popular program, I think we kind of covered that, but it seems like the um, COVID and CS, the, the hotter area, the most. It's still not here. Now you're, you're breaking up. Maybe we, if we all turn our video off, that might help. Let's try that. Try to deal with our bandwidth here. All right. Um, how about now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes. Ah, there we go. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it, it seems like CIS is the most popular, though I am seeing a lot of people uh, enrolling or declaring in our cybersecurity program at the moment. So that we'll kind of see if that pendulum is swinging again. Um, any other brilliant programs out there? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to guess we're on topic two because I didn't hear. Yes. Which is the last time. Okay. Um, our cyber program, as I mentioned earlier, seems to have doubled. Uh, I don't know if it's brilliant, but, um, 
we, we have a good relationship with our transfer institution down here. So it's a quick path into a uh, uh, four-year degree. Let me ask, what are you guys using for aligning cybersecurity certifications? Um, our cybersecurity program is really into its second full year, and we chose to align with uh, all four of the CompTIA certifications for a couple different reasons. So we're doing Security Plus, Pentest Plus, uh, CISA Plus, and the CASP Plus. And the reason we chose those was um, primarily due to cost. Uh, you start looking at CEH and some of these others, and they've got six, $700 price ranges, and then you're expecting students at an associate degree or certificate level to be able to sit and pass for some of those exams and it becomes wow. you know just kind of ridiculous well, so <laughs> we opted to go with the comp tia and my, well don't they have to have like five years industry experience before they can sit for them anyways uh, for uh for some of those yeah ceh and uh, cassp i think but um so what do i use uh, i use my uh transfer institutions guide <laughs> So I go over to Eastern Michigan University, who is a uh, center of cyber excellence through Homeland Security. And we just make sure our course outcomes for the syllabi outline uh, are line up with each other. And I just do the very basic fundamentals and then transfer over there and they get the high class, the higher classes over there. So when my students come into my program, uh, they know they're not getting an associate's degree and getting a job. They're getting an associate's degree and moving on to a four-year institution. And I, I make that very clear. That's how the program was developed about five, six years ago. Um, and I'm sure you're aware how much it morphed over the last year, the last couple of years. And my original goal was, yeah, Security Plus. But if you try to line that up with, uh, I think that's nice framework. It's the foundations courses, or no, the, no, it's the essentials courses, and I essentially teach the foundation courses, so I'd have to reinvent my whole class and program, which is not uh, not popular on campus right now for us to change anything. So I'm kind of uh, waiting, but I do have plans to include uh, Security Plus. Um, I was contemplating uh, Pen. Plus, but I don't know how upset our transfer partners would be if I did that. So I'm sure that's not much help at all, Scott. Sorry. That's okay. In Any others aligning to what certifications for your cybersecurity? I'm just curious. So we do it as networking and cybersecurity. So they do A plus, Net plus, Security plus, Linux plus. Um, it also maps to those Microsoft Technology Associate ones, but they're not taking the test because of the, the funding mechanism. Um, and then we also map to Eastern for a 2 plus 2 program. Uh, and then Walsh out of Troy, they have, it's almost a 3 plus 1. I think it's like 84 credits they accept. Uh, and that has been a, another method for them to get. I think it's automotive cybersecurity, and then they have some other um, security one. Um, but EMU was by far the best transfer partner for security. Um, so, yeah, ours is kind of a, a jack of all trades. And then we also do include ethical hacking um, within the, the program, but we do not align it to a cert. You do not. Okay. Okay. Um, how about new programs? I think Will just stated that that's not happening in Monroe right now. Um, I well, have in the works a data analytics program where I collaborated with business on it. And um, it's sitting in the college curriculum committee right now. Um, Actually, tomorrow, hopefully, it'll be approved through there and move its way to the president's office and the board. Um, they have not given pushback on the curriculum guide itself, 
Um, however, there has been concern about um, employability uh, with an associate's degree. So I've done a study on that and um, have also reached out to uh, Northwood and Walsh um, since they're, they're quicker to articulate um, and both have expressed um, very strong interest in it is Northwood already has a data analytics program and Walsh is creating one right now. Um, has anybody worked with data analytics in your area yet? We are introducing a new data analytics course, not a program that uh, one of the folks on our CIS side is going to teach and it's uh, aligned to the Microsoft DA100 uh, certification exam. But uh, my understanding is more about the tools than it is doing a huge amount of data analytics per se, but he did align it to that cert. But we don't have a program, it's just a specific course that can be used as an elective in a number of business programs as well as in the CIS side. That's the same thing I'm thinking is I wanted to create a uh, analytics or data sciences program. Uh, it'd be interdisciplinary uh, with the folks over in math and in, uh, we fall under the business division with the IT stuff. Um, but this is, you know, I have a brand new dean that started like two months ago. So he is still learning the ropes. And so that's why a lot of our programs have been put on hold. Um, but that's my thought was the same thing as you know, look at the data. How does it apply to business settings? Yeah, he's going to do a little Power BI and some other things in there. Okay. Uh, it's my understanding that's part of the scope okay. for us. You're still breaking up every once in a while, Robert. From what we've seen, Lost Robert. <laughs> <laughs> ah, technology. Anybody uh, participating in the other conference that's going on today? I've been kind of going back and forth. The Michigan Cybersecurity Summits today. Yeah, I've been listening here and there. Yeah, I've been trying to go back and forth between them. I didn't realize I had a conflict. Other programs on the horizons? No, just data sciences. It's like, Robert, are you back? Yeah, he's, he's in the chat room. Yeah. Um, my my topic is number four, actually. Does anybody know what's going on with yes. Microsoft certifications? I can tell you a little bit. Okay. Okay. So here's what I know. Microsoft obviously has dropped the MCSA certifications for products. There's no more Exchange. There's no more SQL. There's no more Windows Server. Right. Those are the three classes that were for MCSA, 775. 40, 741 and 742 yep. are gone. However, I attended the Microsoft Server Summit. Okay. They are going all role-based certifications with Azure. The one thing that they are announcing that's in beta right now is a new certification called AZ-800. AZ-800 is administering a Windows Server hybrid core infrastructure that combines on-prem and Azure administration. And then there's an AZ-801 that takes it one step deeper. Okay. So my college had to make a decision on what we were going to do. And we just presented to our 
advisory board uh, three changes. We're going to take our the 7740, which was all about install, compute, and storage, mm-hmm. and we're going to make that server plus. And that's what I'm thinking too. We're going to we're going to leave the identity one because Active Directory and group policy and all the settings are important. We're just going to teach it with the newer technology, 2022, 2019, whatever. But we're still going to have an identity course. Okay. And then, because we only technically have really one cloud course in our program, it's called Cloud Technologies. It gives students the ability to work with AWS, Google Cloud, and Azure, and it's aligned to the CompTIA Cloud Plus certification. We are going to go forward with the AZ-800 administering a Windows Server core hybrid infrastructure and make that our third. So we are going to, ha- we still think there's going to be on-prem and cloud integration out there. Yes, I don't see it going completely cloud away for many organizations for some time. Right. And so we felt that was a great way to get students still managing their on-prem stuff. It's going to do things like Azure Connect, uh, Azure Arc, Windows Admin Center, PowerShell, all the ways you administer both cloud and on-prem network or uh, systems. So that's what we're doing. Now, as far as resources, I'm sure there'll be some available for the AZ-800. Obviously there's resources available for Server Plus. We may have to use our own resources or look to find you know, chapters out of a Cengage book yeah. for that's, doing something. The, but right we now. used to use, we use LabSim for the three mm-hmm. server courses we always have. And I have not got a definitive answer from test out what their plan is for those three courses. I can't seem to get an answer. So if anybody knows that, I'd love to hear. No, they it. probably do. But that's kind of what that's what we're going to do. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of in line with what I was thinking. That's why I mentioned in my little chat there is that you know I was teaching the first two server courses, or well, what I always thought were the first two server courses. And then looking for new textbooks, I'm like, they, they don't exist anymore. Then digging in, yeah, they're getting rid of it, and it's going to be role-based, which I, I can understand. I don't think the jump to Azure is going to be as quick as Microsoft is hoping. I agree. So I, I I was actually looking at a Server Plus book the other day, thinking this might be the new option. And it does, you know, Scott, what you said uh, aligns with what I was also thinking. So, And if you have not looked at the CompTIA official uh, curriculum, it's pretty good. Okay. So they have built, it's based around CERT master learn, but they've got labs, they've got assessments. The labs can be, um, there's two types. There's a skill based and then there's an assessment based. So the one is kind of recipe driven and the other one is we're going to make you think. So their curriculum is pretty decent. Okay. So you might want to check that out. Um, that's, the, that's something that I, in the past, have always gone with Cengage and LabSim. I'm looking at looking at the official curriculum. Okay. And then one more thing on the certifications, and it regards MTA. So MTA certifications have gone away as of next June. Yep. Uh, you, you, they're no longer selling vouchers, but the, the exams officially retire next June. So if you have vouchers, students can still use them. The replacement for that for us is Certiport has come out with the Information Technology Specialist Certification. And what has happened is when Microsoft abandoned it, Certiport basically said there's a niche in the market for this. So what they did is they acquired, it's my understanding, is they acquired the original exams that Microsoft had, and they went back and reviewed them and released the new information technology specialist certification starting in June. Part of the reason I know this is because I and several of my colleagues were exam writers for these exams. So we went back and reviewed the existing uh, objectives for the candidates went through and rewrote, uh, you know, got rid of questions that didn't apply, uh, created new ones that did apply. And these exams now exist. Uh, As far as a cost basis, you can get a site license for MOS and for the ITS, Information Technology Specialist side. Uh, The site license includes 500 exams of each. 
and uh, the total, they broke it up into two different pieces, but it ends up being around $6,300. And if you take that, you divide it by 500, it's roughly around 10, 12 bucks per exam per student. So that's the route we ended up going. So we've replaced MTA with the CertiPort Information Technology Specialist, and those are gonna be the exams we use for validating um, third party uh, you know, critique of our program, our program outcomes. Thanks, Scott. That's very, very useful. All right. Um, so can you actually hear me? <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, Woohoo! Okay. Woo um, <laughs> so uh, general computing, I was asked to, uh, to talk about that. Um, which schools are you doing like some sort of uh, computer competency for your um, general students? I'll, I'll, I'll chime in here. So this is a fun topic on our campus. Um, about 10, 12 years ago, we made uh, computer competency one of our general education requirements. And ever since then, everybody hates us. And, you know, because all these other students are of the digital age and uh, they know what they're doing, which in every single one of my classes, my one third class, which is our intro course, they proved to me that they don't know what they're doing. Um, our current registrar is trying to get rid of the requirement along with the nursing department because they don't like having that extra three credit hours in their curriculum. And we are trying to now align our general education outcomes to the Michigan transfer agreement. And in the Michigan transfer agreement, there is not a need for computer competency. So I have the feeling that within the next year, we will probably be, get, be, getting, be getting rid of our general education requirement of computer competency. And it will only be a program requirement. Um, but in the meantime, we are using a homegrown test that is currently based out of uh, one of the products in MindTap via Cengage. Okay, so we still have it as a um, graduation requirement is how it's worded in our system. And it is you know, the general computing competency, but we do have a test out option for programs that do not require the class. Um, and the test out option that we use is called Technomedia because it's a very hands-on and it was pretty inexpensive too. So everybody seemed to be happy with it. Um, however, there's the same thing that goes around campus is, well, the students, I mean, they, they're born with a phone in their hand. They know how to use computers. Um, yet they keep proving otherwise. So it's it's always something that needs to be brought back at the radar. Does anybody else have it at their institution? We tried to get something to be a graduation requirement a number of years ago, and it never, it wasn't successful. So we ended up coming up with our own little test for folks wanting to go into CIS and CIT. And um, it was difficult logistically to manage and get people to take it. And we had them do it when they were doing their normal placement testing. And the end result was we quit doing it after a period of about a year and a half to two years because um, not just because of the logistics, but also we found that we had more students that didn't need to take a remedial computer course than did. So at that time, it was showcasing that they did know what they were talking about. Um, for those that didn't pass, they took a remedial course that we have. But um, yeah, we, we got rid of that some time ago. Thank you. Um, any others? Let's see, we had KBCC in here. in here as well. Anything of those we need to check? You're still breaking up. Here, let me uh, type it. <laughs> Does KB 
CC or um, Oakland and um, uh, Wayne as a reporter. It's like CM. Yeah, uh, so KBCC does not. Okay. Um, all right. So if you can hear me, uh, what challenges are we facing in our programs right now? <laughs> 